wash his hat. April Fool! <laughs> Casper, put it there. Stop it, Spooky! Stop it! <laughs> What's so funny, Spooky? April Fool, chum. So long, Casp. I'm gonna have some fun April fooling people. No, Spooky, come back. That's not nice.
especially arithmetic. Two times three is eight, or no, or nine, or no, um... Six? That's two times three is six. Thanks, Ma. Two times three is six. Now to carry the six and... Hey, Specs! Ain't you playing baseball with us? I can't, fellas. I gotta finish my homework. But we haven't got enough fellas without you. Gosh, I can't let the guys down. <coughs> Polly wants a cracker. Polly wants a cracker. Here's a cracker, Polly. Now will you do this for me? All right, Polly, will you do this all way for me? Four times four is eight. Eight times eight is sixteen. Sixteen times sixteen is thirty-two. Well, seems like Specs is improving at last. Thirty-two men on a dead man's chest. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Specs, come back and finish your homework. Ah, gee. Don't you know that if you study real hard, someday you might even be president. Golly. I bet if I was the president, I could do almost anything I wanted to. Specs, now that you've finished chopping the wood, you can come in and do your homework by the fireplace. Gee, I can't, Ma. I gotta go and campaign to be president. And if I am elected president, I promise to do away with all dog catchers. <laughs> is your desk, Mr. President. Hmm, this place will have to be redecorated. Mr. President, your cabinet has assembled for the day's meeting. Gentlemen of the cabinet, I expect every man to give me his full support and collaborate with me in every way. Now, if there isn't any further business, I declare this meeting adjourned. And the last minute is a rotten egg. <laughs> our latest three-stage rocket. Very well, Professor. Proceed with the launching. The missile is now in position for firing. White data computers rolling. Rocket engines ready for takeoff. Five, four, three, two, one. Blast <laughs> Professor, send me three dozen of those rockets for the 4th of July. Uh, Mr. President, Will you please throw out the first ball? Hold it, Mr. President. You have some very important business to attend to. But I've got to start the ball game. The budget has to be balanced, Mr. President. Two times three, carry over the six to seven times nine and... Here are some of the figures on foreign aid. Army and Navy expenditures, highway construction, and social security. 300,000 times 642 is... Here are the latest figures on mosquito control. <laughs> oh, hey, Mr. President. Where do you want these figures on the appropriations? Oh. That settles it. 
So long, Ma. Specs, you come right back in here and finish your homework. Gosh, Ma, I don't have to study anymore. I've just been elected president. President? Yeah, president of our ball club. this, I guess you can come in. Julius! Drop that sandwich! Just for that, get out there where you belong! I'm sick of leading a dog's life. I'm gonna live like the humans do. for a walk in the park. Uh, uh, yes, sir, officer. It, it certainly is. Man, this is really living. Humans go through an awful lot to enjoy smoking. Hey, mister, did you lose this baseball? Thanks, buddy. You can go in free for returning it. Gee, thanks a lot, mister. Come on, bluebirds! Come on, bluebirds! Come on, dragons! Come on, dragons! Who are you rooting for? Why, you're, uh, the, the bluebirds! Who? I, 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 I mean the dragons! Hey there! Tone coat! Right it up! Why are you trying to do? Start a riot? Mmm, fancy French cooking. The humans sure know how to eat. Your order, monsieur. I'll have this. Lobster à la Thermidor. An excellent choice, monsieur. Yow! Help, waiter! Help! The chef's apologies, monsieur. The lobster, she is not quite to cook, you know. Crepe Suzette, monsieur. <laughs> and now the check, monsieur. Oh, what's that for? For eighty-four dollar and twenty-five cents. The money you owe for the dinner. Money? What's that? The sugar, the cabbage, the filthy lucre, the green stuff. Gosh, uh, I haven't any of that. A very unfortunate situation. Good day, monsieur. Thanks for your hospitality, pal. <laughs> This 
This must be long in here. Flying feet is leading by length, and at the finish, it's flying feet. A hundred to one shot! Yahoo! I won! I'm rich! I'm rich! Okay, sucker, get money of your life. My life! Which way did he go? He must have went that way. Here's your supper, Julius. Boy, there's nothing like a dog's life after all. Now, what better place would there be to find a friend? I tell you, Professor, that's absolutely ridiculous. Golly, that doesn't sound friendly. I've heard enough, Professor. Now you're through. Here, Professor, let me help you up. Uh, thanks, little fellow. I'm Casper, the friendly ghost. Someday the dean will see I'm right. Right in what, Professor? That there really is a man in the moon. Of course there is. I could help you meet the man in the moon. Hey. You could? I'd fly you there to meet him, but I'm afraid you're a bit too heavy for me. Well, I, I was planning to fly there myself anyway. Really, Professor? How? Come, I'll show you. Golly, a rocket ship. What's holding you back, Professor? My rockets just don't have sufficient horsepower to get me there. Horsepower? Wait right here, Professor. I'll be right back. Here's your horsepower, Professor. Meet Nightmare, my horse. A, a ghost horse? OK, Nightmare, rockets away! What was that? I'll take a look. Why, hello, little star. What happened? I was falling. Luckily, I landed on this strange thing. This is a rocket from Earth bound for the moon. Gee, you saved me from hitting Earth. You see, us stars try not to land, but sometimes we just get tired. Come inside and rest a while. Professor, this is a little star who got tired and was falling from the sky. Oh, poor fellow must be hungry. Here, try some milk and cheese. Thank you, but we've plenty of that up here with the Milky Way. And how about something strictly from Earth like uh, bubble gum? Golly! An Earth made balloon! <sighs> Say, that's just what you'll need when you're tired. Just hang from your own balloon. Professor, you're a star saver. Hmm, moonbeams. We're in the vicinity of the moon. I'm going to check Nightmare. Nightmare, how about landing on that moonbeam? I have an idea that will make the professor very happy. What's up? Professor, this moonbeam leads right to the moon. I'm sure your rockets have the power for the short trip. How wonderful. I can now zoom to the moon on my own power. Professor, are you all right? Uh, I'm okay, thanks to this swamp I landed in. <laughs> That's no swamp, Professor. That's the green cheese of the moon. Well, Casper, where can we find the man in the moon? See? There he is, painting up for the half-moon period. 
excuse me, Casper, but I just can't wait to meet him. Boy, oh boy, am I glad to meet you. Oh, a Martian. Wait, wait, I'm a creature from Earth. No, oh, yikes, oh, that's even worse. But, but, but I'm a friend of Casper, the friendly ghost. <laughs> Why didn't you say so the first time? <laughs> well, any friend of theirs is a friend of mine. Now that I've met you, Mr. Man on the Moon, I can't wait to get back to Earth and tell my Dean. <laughs> oh, you better leave immediately. Quick, Casper, take him back, take him back. He's already starting to moon. Oh, golly, now he's moony. What do we do? <laughs> I think it's too late, it's too late. He's moonstruck. <laughs> there he goes, banging the like a dog. He's heading for the edge of the moon. <laughs> I hope he has sense enough not to jump off. <laughs> Go! He jumped off! Oh, I told you he was moonstruck. Come on, Nightmare. We've got to save him. There he goes, Nightmare. Where am I? W what happened? You fell off the moon, Professor. And lucky for you, right into the Milky Way. But how do I get down to Earth from here? Say, Professor, have you any more bubble gum? Uh, yes, I do. Why? Remember the fallen stars? I get it. I'll chew a whole package. Fine, Professor. I'll guide you back to Earth. Easy does it. OK, Professor, we made it. Now I must rush to the Dean. I wonder what the Dean will say. Uh, once and for all, Professor, to prove to you there is no man on the moon, let's go to the observatory and look through the telescope. Agreed. A <laughs> man on the moon, imagine that. He believes me. I wonder what convinced him. <laughs> Professor, come back soon. And don't forget Casper and Nightmare, Man in the Moon. Timothy. <laughs> What's your problem, Timothy? 
<laughs> Today is Thanksgiving, <laughs> and I'm gonna be the Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> uh, uh, if you were thinner, nobody would want to eat you. This vibration treatment will take off weight. <laughs> Skipping rope will make you lighter. Nothing could be that bad. That's what you think, Jeepers. Here, read it yourself. So what are you worrying about? I never went camping in my life. Relax, pal. I wasn't an Eagle Scout for nothing. Leave everything to your old friend, Jeepers. Gee, you're a real pal. You're going to...
gonna be a real hero to that kid, Creepers. You'll look just like Daniel Boone. Do you really think so? Are you sure my Uncle Creepers, the world's greatest hunter, lives here, huh? Yes, I'm sure. Get your guide here, Coonskin Creepers. Specialist in hunting, fishing, camping, and stuff like that there. I'm ready, Unc. Let's start for the wild woods, Unc, and camp and stalk wild animals, huh? And guys like Kit Carson, Buffalo Bill, and Davy Crockett were just babes in the woods compared to coonskin creepers. Golly gee. I can't just walk another step. Gosh, what happened to Unc? <laughs> Why, you rubber, he just stopped to set up camp. Well, how about that? Uncle Creepers, will you show me how to light a fire by rubbing two sticks together, huh, will ya? Golly, that's terrific, Uncle Creepers. Oh, <laughs> it was really nothing, Frisky. Gee, what a swell knife. Will you show me how to throw it, Unc? Huh? Son, Coonskin's the best knife thrower east of the Drippasippi. Oh, boy. Let's see you split a card at 50 paces. OK, Unc. Fire when ready. one of those big muskies, Unc, will you, huh, will you, huh? Skin not only caught it, but mounted it, too. Gosh. How about showing me how to hunt bears, Unc? Huh? Will you, huh? Will you? Now, when I chase after the kid, you save him from the nasty old bear and become a hero. Jeepers, you're a genius. <laughs> Sweep the floor. 
why must I do all the dirty work? That's just what I need. Henry! Mop the floor! Yes, my dear. robot that can do all the housework. You can make your selection, sir, from any of these late models. Now, this is Electronica, designed for heavy housework. That's the one I want. Let me show you how she operates. A sample of your voice, please. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. She is now set and will only respond to your voice. To demonstrate, order her to clean this up. Electronica, clean up that dirt. Oh, she must be ordered to stop or she just repeats whatever she was told to do. Electronica, stop. She's great. I'll buy her. Her name is Electronica, and she can do all our housework. Oh, yeah? Well, sweep the rug. Electronica, sweep the rug. Well, dear, what do you think? Well, uh, I don't know. It... Just wait till you see how she serves. Electronica, bring us some coffee. I'll answer the phone, dear. Made. Uh, don't worry, dear. She can straighten it out. Electronica, clean up these dirty dishes. Now put all the dishes in the cabinet. That's very good. Now that the housework is taken care of, I'm going down to the corner for a beer.
floor, scrub the woodwork. We have a big scare raid coming up. We need some extra practice. If I can't sleep in peace here, I'll find a place where I can. That distant mountain looks just right. Golly, listen to all those snores. That explains it. It's Bear Mountain, and all the bears are hibernating. All these snoozing sounds are making me sleepier than ever. Now, where can I sleep? No snoring in this cave. I wonder if it's empty. I'm in luck. It's empty and with a good warm blanket, too. Oh, what's the use? I may as well go back and try sleeping again. That does it. Now someone has taken over my cave. And my blanket, too. Enough is enough. A ghost. Where am I? You're in my cave, sleeping under my blanket, Mr. Ghost. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Bear. I thought the cave was empty. Uh, uh, then you're not here to haunt my nights? I'm Casper, the friendly ghost, and I never haunt anyone. That's a relief. I've got enough trouble. Would you like to tell me about it? It sometimes helps to unbear your troubles. Oh, Casper. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sleep. And it's so lonely with all the other bears asleep, too. I know just the sleep doctor who can cure your trouble. Sleep doctor? The Sandman. He'll know how to make you sleep. The Sandman? Uh, do you really know him, Casper? Sure. He's one of my best friends. Gee, that's funny. I thought he was only a fairy tale. He's for real, all right. You just wait here. I hope the Sandman isn't asleep when I get there. I hate to bother him. He looks like he's busy on a big project. I know. I'll become invisible until he's through. <laughs> a big project, sand castles. <laughs> well, who's that? Who do these things? The place is haunted. Gosh, I forgot I'm invisible. No wonder he was frightened. I'm sorry, Mr. Sandman. It's me, Casper, the friendly ghost. <laughs> oh, Casper? I should have known. Say, what brings you here at an hour when all the good little boys should be there to sleep? Well. It's a sleep problem of a friend of mine. Here's the Sandman, just as I promised. Uh, 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 hiya, Doc. Now what do we do? Well, we just sit and wait for the sand to take effect. I might as well let them sleep. I've always been a good bear. Why should this thing happen to me? <laughs> Everyone's asleep but me. Gosh, the sand worked on us, but not on him. I feel just awful about this. Oh, this air mattress is terrific, Doc. Good, and now to get the work. <laughs> Sheep? Yes. Now you start counting them until you fall asleep. Okay, Casper, you know what to do. Follow me, girls. Come on, Mr. Bear. A one, a two, a three, four, five, uh -oh. six. Mr. Sandman, seven, do you see what I see? Eight. Mutton nine, chops ten, and lamb stew. Eleven, 
world. Mr. Bear, I'm ashamed of you, especially when the sheep are here to help you. I'm sorry, Doc, but I'm as hungry as a bear. What do we do now? I don't know, Casper. Let's just go outside and think about it. This has never happened to me before. It's not your fault, Mr. Sandman. You did your best. Say, it's real quiet. The storming has stopped. That means the hibernation season has ended. Now Mr. Bear can join the others. Gee, now he's asleep. Then I didn't fail him after all. Come, Casper, let's not disturb him. You know what I discovered? It was the snoring of the other bears that kept me awake. Good night. Miserably. Well, that's all right, sir, because I don't want to scare anybody anyway. Oh, you! I'm going to try and find me some friends. We only have 
A sail? Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> you threw that right twiggy, Casper. <laughs> now for the treasure. X marks the spot where the sunken treasure is. Golly, Billy, there's the X. I'll get the treasure, Casper. Er, the captain never leaves the ship. I'll get it. Try taking my guns. Watch this. That's mighty pretty shooting, stranger. That ain't nothing. Watch this. <laughs> One false move, Sheriff, and you're a dead duck. your guns now, Dirty Dan. No, you don't. I'm a taking you in. Now, that's a bank I like doing business with. <laughs> Hell, the bank's been robbed. Sheriff, Dirty Dan just robbed the bank. 
Kingdom. In the royal palace lives the bachelor king, and here lives the population. 105 happily married couples, all joined together by Monsieur Renoir, the official matchmaker for the kingdom. Each morning, precisely at 7, a grand procession emerges from the palace. First, the king. Then, the Minister of War, the Secretary of the Treasure, the Bureau of Motor Vehicle, the Air Force, <laughs> and so on, according to rank. At exactly 7.03, the procession passes the residence of Monsieur Renoir. <laughs> and the parade, she is over. Who ever color the parade? Filthy! Vous make from my chateau the dump of the village. Quelle humiliation. And so at night, the good people sleep with smiles on their faces, serene in the knowledge that in the morning there will be another parade precisely at 7 o'clock. <laughs> man of my prestige should not shovel the garbage. Oui. It is degrading. Oui. You do it. Stupid. Moi. No. Pourquoi vous ne faites Please. pas quelque chose? How can I marry oh, people if I am shoveling garbage all day? Enough. Cette fois, je finis. 
avec l'affaire Garbage. Monsieur, I have the complaint. Every morning at seven, Ratatatam, Ratatatam, Ratatatatam, Tarararam, the king, Ratatatam, the premier, Ratatatam, the general, the ministers, Ratatatam, army, Ratatatam, navy, Ratatatam, department sanitaire, boom, plop, filthy, disgusting. Bravo, bravo. A performance magnifique, Monsieur Renoir. But for the garbage, you must see the Minister of the Sanitary. Each morning at seven. Ratatatam, ratatatam, ratatatatatam, tarararam, the king, ratatatam, the premier, ratatatam, the general, the ministers, boom, boom, ratatatam, army, ratatatam, navy, ratatatam, department sanitaire, boom, plop, filthy, disgusting. Monsieur Renoir, obviously it is the hole in the street that makes the garbage to fall out. For that, you must see the Minister of Broken Boulevard. Ratatatam, ratatatam, ratatatatatam, tarararam, the king, ratatatam, the premier, ratatatam, the general, the ministers, boom, boom, ratatatam, army, ratatatam, navy, ratatatam, department sanitaire, boom, plop, filthy, disgusting. Monsieur Renoir, there is absolutely no record of the hole in your street. This is the record. Monsieur, this hole in the street, she is very big? No, petit. Then the answer, she is simple. No! You would say no to the war hero? War hero? The war of 86, Battle of Saxon River, Duffelberg Offensive, Zutso Forest, and the Battle of the Bulge. For the war hero, something must be done. The hole in the street, she will now be fixed. Poof. Elevation, three meters north, one meter west. Circumference, nine meter and the half. Capacity? Three fifths and the pint. Monsieur Renoir, you are a very lucky man. I kiss all your cheeks. Mwah, mwah. You do not have the hole in the street. Officially, it is nothing but a lousy dent. There is nothing to fix. Eh bien, the hole. She is fixed. It is not the hole. Only the lousy dent. See? Official document. Stupide! Imbécile! Jeunouk! Comme vous êtes idiot! Enough! This time, I go right to the top! Monsieur Renoir, the matchmaker! Merci, 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 merci! Arise, Monsieur Renoir. Your Highness? As official matchmaker, I have long tried to find you the wife. Oui? At last, I have found the woman. Oh? An American movie star. <laughs> it is the fashion. All the kings are married to the movie star. <laughs> Shall I sign the contract? I'll sign, I'll sign. Just one thing, Your Highness. Uh, when the gorgeous movie star rides in the morning parade, she will say, poof, to you. You have the shabby kingdom. Uh, the shabby kingdom? Oui. Uh, she will see the hole in the street in front of my house. Oh, I will take care of that. Voila! And so our story has two happy endings. The king is married to the gorgeous American movie goddess, and the parade no longer passes in front of the matchmaker's house. Le roi, la reine et 
vive la patrie, la roi, la reine, et vive la patrie! To my brilliant husband! <rire> Naturellement! Imbécile! Cochon! Vous vous faites comme un idiot! Stupide! I might meet a new friend. <coughs> huh? A baby ghost. Oh, a ghost! Wait a minute. You're a ghost yourself. Why are you running away? Hmm. That's right, isn't it? I'm Casper, the friendly ghost. Can I help you? Oh, Casper, I'm lost. <laughs> If you tell me where you're from, I'll take you home. But I don't know where I'm from. <laughs> Listen, what's your name? Maybe that will give me a clue. My name? Hmm. Clarence? No. Reginald? No. Think hard. Oscar? No. Sally? Sally is a girl's name. Tom? Dick? Harry? I give up. Well, let's see. I'll, I'll have to call you something. Something. That's a dandy name. No, 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 you don't understand. Something. Boy, what a name. Oh, well, maybe something will do. Come on, something. We've got to find your home. <laughs> now what's wrong? I don't want to go to my home. I want to go to your home. <laughs> OK, I'll take you home with me for the night. Let's hurry. I'm afraid of the dark. But you're a ghost. But I'm just a baby ghost, and I haven't learned any ghostly ways yet. Well, I can teach you. Oh, boy. Can you teach me to fly? OK. A lot depends on the takeoff. Whee! I can fly! Now, Casper, will you teach me how to become invisible? Sure. It's easy. All you have to do is Gee, is that all there is to it? Sure, try it. Well, here goes, Casper. Whee! It worked! I'm invisible! Now come on home, and tomorrow I'll teach you some other things. Goody! I keep hearing noises. This place must be haunted. Don't be scared. It's only something crying. I know it's something, but what? Just a minute. I'll show you. Stop crying, and I'll tell you how to become visible again. Now, you... Thanks, Casper. Here I am. Look, a baby ghost. His name is something, and he's lost. Great. We'll keep him. And help him grow up to be a big, bad ghost. Boy, that'll be fun. My friend Casper's teaching me how to be a big, bad Ghost. No, you've got it wrong, something. I'm teaching you ghostly ways so that you can be helpful to others. Fully! Splendid! I can't wait to take him on a scare raid. Can you fly? Good. Casper taught me. Wow. He's gonna grow up to be just like us. Hey, he went right through the roof. Oh, boy! I'm gonna have some fun! <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> Drat that pesky kid. <laughs> Don't they look funny? They're awfully mad at you. No, we're not. Huh? He suits us fine. Yeah, shows he'll grow up like us. But I want something to be our friendly ghost. Bah! One friendly ghost around a house is enough. What else can you do, something? I can disappear, like this. See? Splendid. At any rate, Caspi, you're a good teacher. I like helping others. Come on, something, show yourself. I'll show him. Upsy daily. Hey! What happened? Something. It's you. Who'd you expect? Mother Goose? That does it. Wait, he didn't mean any harm. I'll do some harm when I get my hands on him. Goody. 
They want to play tag. Please, stop. Which way did he go? This away. No, that away. Something. Drop that stick. Oh, all right. <laughs> Look, he's sorry for what he's done, aren't you? Oh, sure. But not much. This boy has got to go. He's too bad, even for us. Don't worry, something. I'll stay around until you're found. Something. My little baby, I found you. Mama. What do you know? Something really is his name. Are you all right, baby? Sure. Casper took care of me. When I grow up, I want to be friendly, just like him. Now, isn't that something? You feel good. Good and bad, I hope. I'll fly along with them. I hate spending a winter day all alone. It sure is cold. Boy, it's snowing harder than ever. I can hardly see where I'm flying. <laughs> I'm all covered with snow and ice. Help, I'm falling. Me too. It never snowed like this before. I give up. Let's go home and thaw out. I better ask old Saul to turn on more heat before everything is frozen solid. That's funny. I'm closer to the sun, but it's still so cold I'm turning blue. Oh, hello, Casper. Gosh, Saul, what's wrong? Why aren't you giving off any heat? I'm sorry, Casper, but some little rascals in a spaceship stole my heat generator. Golly, that's awful. And I'm so cold, I couldn't even look for them. I may be able to drum up a bit of heat for you, Casper. Ah, <coughs> 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 oh, I'm feeling like my old self again. I've about had it, Casper. You better find them fast. Don't worry, Saul. I'll bring back your generator. Gosh, there goes the spaceship. Hey, wait! Ball speed ahead. We're being followed. You've got to listen to me. Yank! Here comes that guy again. Lucky we're almost home. from Earth. I came to get the heat generator you took from the sun. Oh, yeah? Well, it's ours now, sonny boy. But it doesn't belong to you. Who's gonna stop us? You? Take that. You can't hurt a ghost with that ray gun. Seven snowballs! Quick! Get the ship inside the ice palace! Wait, can't we be friends? Who wants to be friends with a ghost? I've got to get that generator back. 
Ooh, this place is like an icebox. Here's the heat generator, King Cool. Good. Now we can keep our planet nice and warm. Just a minute. You can't take what doesn't belong to you. It's the space folk again. That generator belongs to old Saul, a son. Scram, Spook. I'm keeping it here in my ice palace, see? Well, I'm not leaving without it. This will cool you off. Ugh, that ice water froze so fast, I can't move. Take him up and toss him out the window. That'll get rid of him. Yes, King Cool. That's the end of you, Spook. God, I'm so cold, I can't use my ghostly powers to get free. What a break. The friction of that slide melted the ice. I've got to make King Cool give back that generator, or Earth will be frozen. Come on, fellas. I must have that generator. It's that Earth spook again. Well? Spook, you're going in deep freeze. Lock him up in the ice caverns. Maybe I'll think of some way to convince them while in there. You know, this isn't being very friendly. This place is colder than the ice palace. I wonder where this cave goes. Uh-oh, I'm all covered with coal dust. Golly, the walls here are all cold. Hmm, those stones I kicked struck sparks. If I make a big enough fire in this cave of coal, it might be able to heat up the whole planet. Gee, this place is getting red hot. I wonder if this heat is getting up to the ice palace. Thank goodness I got rid of that coal dust. Hey, the spook has escaped from the ice cavern. Wait, King Cool. I found a way to heat your planet. Gosh, he's right. It is warm and cozy all of a sudden. Now that you have your own heating system, will you return the generator to the sun? Of course, Casper. My people will take it back on the spaceship for you. Goodbye, King Cool. I'm glad to have made such warm friends. Goodbye, Casper. Thanks for your help. Thanks to you, Casper, I can rise and shine again. Ah, <sighs> that sunshine feels real good.
until we reach the top. Dish, Mulligan Mouse Stew. doing out here in the snow? It's that catnip, Hyman. Yeah, he chased us out again. Oh, he did, eh? Catnip, I don't know what I would do around here without you. Just leave everything to Cousin Hyman. Watch the house while I'm shopping, Catnip, and I'll bring you a nice present. are on Cousin Hyman, fellas. Hi, 
tough on my chums, pal. And one of these days, they're gonna pack up and walk out on you, and you'll be out of work, too. Oh, no! Wait a minute, fellas. I'll do anything if you just stay. I'll give you the run of the house. You think we ought to give them another chance, boys? Absolutely worthless around here. And stay out! <laughs> 